so you can ask the question ji any question from chapter number 2 anything which is not clear no sir i i talked about in chapter number 2 the design features of human language and we compared those design features with animal system of language and we concluded that animals sir, that do sir, not have I didn't get the complete answer the meeting was ended when you were uh, answering the my question okay anyways uh, uh, then we talked about that animals that do not have all the characteristics that human beings share, but some of the characteristics they did have. Then we talked about in the end that there were certain uh, animals and they were experimented, they were taught the language, but uh, they, they did learn certain words, but they were unable to communicate the way human beings communicate. So this is what we had in chapter number two. Chapter number three also talks about you know, uh, the pre-programmed uh, system of human beings. So here we will talk about basically the mind. We will talk about, you know, the surface uh, of the mind. Okay. What goes on? What are the parts of dif uh, different parts of mind? Okay. So these things in this chapter, we will talk about. So the very first thing that uh, you know, uh, Jane Aitchison talks about in unit number three is language and the brain. It, it defines the relationship of language and the brain. And it raises the question and the question is, is there biological evidence for innate language capacity? So Jane Aitchison says that human brain is divided into a lower section. This is called the brain stem and a higher section this is called the cerebrum. Let me share the screen with you and then you can see yourself in your number three that there the brain is divided into two parts. This you can see that there is cerebrum and there is brain stem. Okay. So can you see this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Anyways, the brain is divided into a lower section, the brain stem, and a higher section, the cerebrum. The brain stem keeps the body alive by controlling breathing, heartbeats, and so on. So brainstem is, you know, controlling your body structure, how you move your hands, how, how you carry out certain other tasks. So they are controlled by the brainstem. The cerebrum pur pur purpose seems to be to integrate an animal with its environment. This is the part of the brain where language is likely to be organized. The cerebrum is further divided into two halves. The cerebral hemisphere, which are linked, which is linked to one another by a series of bridges. So there is cerebral hemispheres, okay, which is which are linked to one another by a series of bridges. Then there is left hemisphere and there is a right hemisphere. The left hemisphere controls the right side of the body. So remember, there is there there are two hemispheres, left hemisphere and right hemisphere. Right hemisphere controls the left part of the body and left hemisphere controls the right part of the body. So again, let me share uh, the screen with you and then let me show you this. You can see that the left part is controlling the right side of the body and right part is controlling the left side of the body. So this is how our uh, cerebrum, which is divided into two different hemispheres, okay, have been uh, shown here. Sir, uh, sir, please keep sharing the screen while you speak. We can see the screen and you both. Okay, okay. It has a oh, function. So it no. can keep uh, the screen share on. No, no issue, no issue. Thank you, sir.
now can you see yes sir okay it's fine now. so the left hemisphere controls the right side of the body and the right hemisphere controls the left side of the body but two hemispheres they do not function identically remember this thing uh, later on we will talk about you know the what they are called because they were uh, discovered by uh, doctors discovered by linguists so their name is you know broca and their name is you know wernick so one hemisphere will help in understanding the language and the other hemisphere will help in producing the language okay so the sort that then there are certain tests that you know jnhsm talks about for example jnhs has there, there is sodium amytal test it was developed by wada in the 1940s then there is dichotic listening test okay the right hemisphere appears to have primary responsibility for processing a lot of other incoming signals that are coming okay and they may be non linguistic as well right hemisphere is trying to help us understand the language is trying to help us understand the different kinds of non linguistic you know clues as well which are coming alongside the language so an image is presented very fast to either the left or the right visual field the area that can be seen to left or right without moving the head or eyes a linguistic stimulus will normally be processed faster if it is presented to the right visual side which is then transferred to the left usually language dominant heavy sphere electrodes are attached to the skull okay these were different kinds of tests that he talks about that in the modern world that how people they are using different kinds of tests different kinds of things okay in order to find out that where actually the language resides and which specifically the part of the brain helps in the production as well as in the understanding of the language for example there is you can see that left side and right side okay then the majority of normal human beings perhaps as many as 90% gene hsn says have speech located primarily in the left hemisphere speech is located primarily in the left hemisphere this cannot be due to chance okay plus further related discovery is that the location of speech centers in the left hemisphere and it seems to be linked to the right handedness speech is residing in the left hemisphere and it is it relates to the right handedness that is most humans are right handed and most people speech is controlled by the left hemisphere most humans are right handed and their speech is controlled by the left hemisphere and vice versa if there is somebody you know who is left handed so there are chances not 100% but there are more and more chances that speech will be located in the right side of the brain now there is broca's area so the part in the illustration is technically described as the anterior speech cortex or more usually as broca's area Paul Broca a French surgeon reported in the 1860s that damage to this specific part of the brain was related to extreme difficulty in producing speech <coughs> then there is wernick's area the part shown as uh, you know the posterior speech cortex or wernick's area karl wernick was a german doctor who in 1870s reported that damage at this part of the brain was found damaging patients okay uh, among patients who had speech comprehension difficulties so wernick's area will produce problem in speech comprehension if there is some uh, injury to wernick's area then people may not be able to understand the language 
and if there is some damage to the broca's area then people may not be able to produce language okay for example you can see here he has given the statistics as well right hemisphere 90% right handed uh, left hemisphere right handed and right hemisphere only 10% okay who are right handed and mostly they are left handed so again i repeat broca's area broca's area was discovered by paul broca in 1860s and if this part is damaged then people will have difficulty in producing the speech and there is vernix area and if this part is damaged then people will have problem in understanding the speech meaning in comprehension of the speech motor cortex and articulate fasci fasciculus there is another part which is shown as motor cortex and it generally helps okay in the uh, move uh, in, in controlling movement of the muscles like hands feet and arms then there there, there is there are a bundle of nervous system nerves okay they are called articulate fasciculus and this is also one of the vernix discoveries that it is now known to form a you know relationship connection between vernix area and broca's area then jane atchison talks about damage to vernix area often destroys speech comprehension and damage to broca's area will probably hinder speech production though this is something of an oversimplification but serious damage to either area remember will create problems for the people particularly puzzling are cases of damage to broca or vernix area where the patient suffers language disorders they may not be able to understand then uh, language <coughs> in some areas of activity it is extremely difficult to do more than one thing at once in speech there are three processes okay which are going on at the very least and they are that sounds are continuously being produced phrases are being activated in their phonetic form and they are ready to be used and number 3 is the rest of the sentence is being planned human beings they they are planning and at the same time through their vocal cords okay they they are uttering the words and then through their sounds okay they are producing the language so lenisberg suggests that correct sequencing is based on an underlying rhythmic principle everybody knows that poetry is much easier to remember than prose because of the underlying pulse which keeps going like the you know tickling of a clock for example it is very easy to remember i wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high over vales and hills but if there is you know prose it is difficult to remember such type of things gene atchison moves forward and gene atchison discusses the localization view and this localization view <coughs> has been used to suggest that brain activity involves is involved in hearing a word in understanding it and then after hearing or understanding it then producing a word and it follows a definite pattern the word is heard and comprehended via vernix area and it you know signals it it works that this signal is then transferred via the you know fasciculus to broca's area where uh, preparations are made to produce a language a signal is then, then sent to the part of the motor cortex to physically articulate the word so there is a tip of the tongue phenomena directly in getting with brain and speech production to work together smoothly 
minor production difficulties of this sort may provide possible clues to how our linguistic knowledge is organized within the brain so let me summarize again what we have talked about we have talked about broca's area we have talked about wernick's area these were the you know doctors uh, psychologists and they one was french the other was german and they discovered broca's area help in the production of speech and wernick's area help in the uh, understanding of speech and damage which is caused to any area will create problems for the human beings <coughs> then there is uh, another area that is called uh, you know fasciculus and it helps in in the in generating the relationship between broca and wernick's area because our mind is working continuously uh, so not only it is listening and trying to understand it is helping us to produce the language so do do you have any question right now ji any question up till now these things are clear to you sari bram jo hai wo asal mein aage ek right aur left hisson mein taqseem ho jata hai aur us sari bram mein jo hai wo aapka broca's area aur wernick's area maujood hota hai aur us sari bram mein jo broca's area hai wo speech ki production mein madad deta hai और जो वर्निक्स एरिया है वो स्पीच की कॉम्प्रीहेंशन में मदद देता है सर ये ब्रोकाज और वर्निक्स सर ये दोनों है मिस पेयर में होंगे लेफ्ट राइट दोनों में जी बिल्कुल ये दोनों ही जो है हमारे ब्रेन का हिस्सा है उसकी जो फर्दर डिवीजन हुई थी उसमें ब्रोकाज एरिया और वर्निक्स एरिया की बात की गई है तो लोकलाइजेशन जो आगे लोकलाइजेशन व्यू है वो क्या है वो हमने यही बताया ना कि सजेस्ट दैट ब्रेन एक्टिविटी इन्वॉल्व इन हियरिंग ए वर्ड understanding it then saying it would follow a definite pattern there is always a pattern there is always a relationship between these you know areas they are working together they are helping one is helping the other and then we are able to understand and produce the the language the word is heard and comprehended by our wernick's area and it signals then and the these signals are transferred via the uh, fasciculus to broca's area where preparations are made to produce it a signal is then sent to the to to part of the motor cortex to physically articulate the word then there is a tip of the tongue phenomena as well the difficulty in getting brain and speech production to work together smoothly minor production difficulties of this sort may provide possible clues to how our linguistic knowledge is organized within the brain there is for example the tip of the tongue phenomena in which we feel that some word is just eluding us sometimes you know we have illusion that we may know the word but it just won't come to the surface that some words in the store are more easily retrieved than others for example speakers who are who, who want to produce a word sextant so this is a word he may produce he can't he may produce sextet he may produce sextant so people may have you know and this will be discussed in our coming a lecture what is aphasia we will talk about aphasia in our next lecture and the kinds of aphasia and the kinds of mistakes for example sometimes we have mistakes in speaking the language and sometimes we make mistakes in understanding the language as well so this inshallah uh, we will talk about in our next lecture